Hey, what's up, guys? This is another episode of PB and J. I'm John, and I'm here with Jesse and Brian. Hey, what's up? Hey, how's it going? So I'm. I mentioned this before, and you guys know this already. I'm going to be coming back to LA next week. But what I didn't tell you is that on Friday, I'm going with my friend to go skydiving. So this could be my last podcast. Um, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Um, but if that is, uh, if that is. Uh, if this is my last podcast and the last movie I end up seeing, just know that it will be Baywatch. I watched that movie uh, today. Do you guys want to hear about it? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I want to hear about it. Yes, okay. boobs. Tell us about boobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know, you've seen all the commercials. It's very similar to the show. I mean, kind of uh, where they have the girls running in a bikini and the guys, especially like The Rock and Zac Efron, they – they're all yoked up and everything, so they they're capturing like the audience from both sides. Whereas the TV show was more geared for the for the male viewers, and it looked very promising. You know, outside of the first 10, 15 minutes, it looked like it, it would be decent, it would be funny, but it wasn't at all. Like the movie's not funny. It was a little bit too long. It it went for over two hours. Really, it was over two hours. I, I, oh well, if not, I mean, I'll have to check. But if it's not, it felt like two hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can um, pretty much determine what the story is, what the plot of the movie is in in the first fifteen minutes. It doesn't get any complicated. There's the story's not complicated. There's no twist. Everything's just laid out very obvious, like in a very obvious way. And for this type of movie, I can actually say that you can just watch it without sound and, and I, I think it's like a joke but i'm serious like if you just watch the movie without sound you will figure out what the plot of the movie is and since the jokes are not funny anyway it doesn't matter like just it just improves the movie yeah it might i mean if you if you add your own dialogue to it it might you might even make it better like that's how bad the jokes were uh that's kind of it's kind of weird because the rock the rock's hilarious right he's like in everything he's yeah. super funny yeah, he, he is, but I, I don't know. They, I mean, everybody in the movie looks good. Right. Um, it's just the, the writing, the, the jokes that they deliver, it's not funny at all. You know, and of course, there's going to be some, some like, dick jokes and, you know, sex-related type of jokes. But in a way, it's a little bit more gross than funny. Uh, um, so there are a lot of those. And not to give any cameos away, but in the opening credit, they gave away the uh, cameos oh. from two of the actors from the from the original show uh, so that kind of that takes away the, from the surprise you know yeah. so yeah so it was kind of weird so if i were to recommend a movie to you guys i would say <clears throat> wait for it on video and just watch it without sound <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah that's too bad cause i thought um you know i i, I kind of thought it would be uh, well, like I think Jesse brought up earlier, how like Twenty One Jump, Jump Street style, where it's like it's corny and it's cheesy and it knows it and it plays it up. Yeah, and it would be funny, the, but it sounds like it's just it's just terrible. This one is too. Like they they admit that it's stupid that they're fighting crime and stuff like that. You know, while they're um, guarding a beach, while they're lifeguard, <laughs> they they bring that up all the time. So they're like, so they make it too obvious, right? It's like okay, that like, you guys are really not like cops or anything like that, but. They don't really take advantage of that. They just continue to push on, trying to solve the the crime, and it just really it's not that interesting of a plot, really. <laughs> which which uh, which is like it should be. It shouldn't be right. It's just a stupid yeah. movie. But if it's not funny, then then don't, not even worth it. Right. Yeah. I mean, I I don't ex- I didn't expect it to have a a good plot. Like I'm not <laughs> expecting a, a thriller or anything or a drama or anything, but. Yeah, the jokes are not there. Visually, it looks good. Maybe that's just really what they care care about, and and they accomplish that. Yeah, uh, mission accomplished. Let's make, let's <laughs> well, make in the money. What, while you were talking about all this, I went to Google, put the Baywatch images, and I guess I just watched the whole movie because <laughs> that's all I did. I just went from picture to picture to picture, and I, I guess I just saved myself thirteen bucks. Yep. There you go. Yeah. So now, now we just gotta wait like three months, and then you can digital download it and just, and just run it on loop with uh, no sound. Yeah. So it, it's worth watch. Just um, don't expect anything. <laughs> or why don't we just watch the YouTube trailers and that's it? Yeah. There you go. Just watch the YouTube. Yeah. So what, what do you give it, Brian? What's your uh, your rank your rating here? Um. So out of ten, I would give it a five. It's not a complete loss, 
there are some good things. They're very, it doesn't come very often, but there's a few good things in there. <laughs> uh, I would say barely watchable, but it, it is watchable, just not in the theaters. <laughs> not, where, not when you have to shell out $20 for a movie ticket and then popcorn and soda and all that. So just, just wait for it. Uh, the movie will probably be out by before the end of summer, so you'll still catch the whole summer theme that the, the movie is trying to capture. So just wait for it later. Wow. Watch it later. I think we're all disappointed. I think Jesse most is disappointed most of all. I I, I don't know. I'm still watching the, the, the <laughs> video right now. Yeah, you're you're probably gonna be MIA for this podcast, yeah. right? Just gonna be going back and forth on the pictures. <laughs> I you guys lost me like five minutes ago. Yeah, <laughs> Alexander Daddario. That that's the only thing I see on my screen right now. I I I'm actually looking, ran I'm looking at a forty inch right now, so. I actually ran into her at a restaurant before. Uh, I, I, John, I told you about this before. Yeah, like she yeah. was like ten feet away from me. So, yeah, she she's she's very pretty. I, I didn't have the gut to say anything to her when she walked by me. So, <laughs> whatever. Could it be because the restraining order said stay ten feet away? <laughs> oh, because mine's that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Well, to to get away from talking a bad movie, our today's a. Uh podcast today is about uh on the next big release this friday dc's uh wonder woman the big question is will this movie save the dc cinematic universe it's the fourth release after man of steel superman batman suicide squad and even though those movies have turned a decent profit not not a huge profit critically they're all they've all been bashed pretty pretty hard uh, i think suicide squad probably the most although it's probably close with Batman vs superman i'm guessing dc movies have they have a, a lineup coming uh, after this one justice league which uh, we talked about in a previous uh, podcast as well as flash and aquaman but there seems to be a lot riding on wonder woman uh, i don't know about you guys but i've seen a ton a ton of marketing for this movie i i think they're doing the same thing they did for batman versus superman uh, i might have got the movie order uh flipped but you know when, when i finally watched the movie it seemed like they wanted you to like the movie so much in the trailers that they showed you all the action scenes and i'm afraid that this is that they may be, be doing the same thing again yeah um and in between all those action scenes it's just a bunch of very slow paced very boring dialogue between the actors just to move the story along so hopefully, you know, this movie does doesn't do the same does not do the same thing. I I, I want it to be good. Yeah. But we'll we'll see. No, no, I'm, I don't I'm, know. I I'm ahead. sorry. Go go let, ahead, Jesse. Let me respond back to Brian. Um, I don't know because Guardians of the Galaxy did the same thing. They have a lot of their their funny bits on the um, you know, on the trailers. I think there were like three different trailers, maybe like little featurettes and stuff. And um, I still want to go into the movie and. You know, I, I liked it. You, but you're right, though. A lot of movies do tend to do that. Uh, the movie sucks. That it has no volume. And they they catch you by the trailers. Like, oh, the best parts are in the trailers. And that's it. So I, it's sometimes hard to gauge if a movie is going to come out good due to its trailers. Right. Um, yeah, but your example with Guardians, they showed, you the, they showed us a lot of the action scenes. But there were a lot of jokes that they didn't show. And that that's you know that sprinkled throughout the movie, and that carried the movie along. Whereas you know like Batman versus Superman, it they, sh- they showed a pretty good scene opening scene, which was the end of the Superman movie, and then there's like this hour of just really slow paced dialogue. Yeah, you know introducing Lex Luthor and all these other characters, and there's just and then there's a whole like trial like this uh, Superman goes to court and. There's just a lot of like these these plots that are like that are not interesting, you know. Like you, these are not the kind of things you want to see in in a superhero type movie. Yeah, you know, and and to to uh, to more, kind of roll with your point is that at WonderCon this year, uh, Warner Brothers had a big panel. It was like an hour, an hour and a half, and it was basically all Wonder Woman. They were just talking about Wonder Woman, yeah. Wonder Woman. They had um, the producer and uh, Jeff Johns up there, and when they showed all, when they did show us footage, it was just action scenes. And for a panel to be that long, 
and to focus on on this movie and to only show action scenes kind of got me a little worried because I was like, there's not one, they didn't show one uh, scene with, with uh, character building or character development or anything like that. It was just action scenes and they look great. Of course. I mean, like, you know, you, yeah, you show an they, action, always look great. they always look yeah. great. Yeah. You show an action scene out of context. It always looks really good. So that kind of got me worried. And, you know, I, I wanted this movie to do well too. You know, these comic book movies, uh, they're coming out all the time now. Right. And what's going to happen eventually is there, there's going to be, there's going to be a fatigue, right? Uh, superhero fatigue. The genre is going to get fatigued and it's going to get to a point to where they're just going to stop making them. And this happens with any genre, right? It happened with the Westerns. It happened with um, gangster movies, right? They were all the movies of their time. And then after a while, they just kind of go away and they fade. The Sanded Sandals uh, genre as well. Movies like Ben-Hur, Gladiator, that kind of stuff. Those are pretty much dead. Uh, you, you know, you get one here and there. So with the superhero genre, I know that it's going to happen. It's going to come. But if you put out, keep putting out bad movies, it, it speeds up the process. And the fatigue's going to come sooner. And I don't want that. There's still a lot that I want to see. And to have like these Warner Brothers keep pushing out bad movies, it could turn off the general public to these movies and hurt the entire genre across the board. So I'm hoping it's good. There's not really any reviews to go off of yet because I think there's there's still a review embargo on the movie. I'm not sure. Uh, we've seen some tweets, right? You guys seen tweets online saying, oh, it's, it's good and it's great. Uh, not a lot to go off of there, though. Yeah, so the tweets I saw were um, best DC Universe movie. That doesn't say much. Yeah, it doesn't say right? anything. That doesn't mean anything. No, I mean, like, the movies that I've seen have been bad. Right. So if they say the best one, that doesn't make it great. Right. Um, that's just the best out of those movies. So it's still, yeah, it still doesn't give me too much, too much confidence. Yeah, and then with Batman's Batman vs. Superman, I remember seeing the same thing. Tweets saying, this is, this is it. They just beat the Avengers. They just matched the Avengers, right? All these tweets. Oh, D uh, DC has their Avengers, and the movie was probably the worst one until Suicide Squad came out. Yeah, and then the Suicide Squad director was saying like "f Marvel." And, yeah, like, yeah. Bat, and yeah, then the movie was garbage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sucks too because Suicide Squad. Uh, me and Jesse, we sat through what two panels at Comic Con, Jesse and Hall H. Oh yeah. Yeah, we were hyped, man. Hyped where they kept showing these cool stuff and. The director was into it. The actors were into it. And I was like, yeah, Suicide Squad. This is going to be a sick movie. And then it was just a dud. I mean, you heard all the people yelling whenever, when they announced that Jared Leto was going to be the Joker. Right, and, yeah. I mean, you heard a lot of uh, girls starting to bash Margot Robbie for being uh, Harley Quinn. But I don't know. It was a lot of hype. And like you said, it, 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 they screwed it up. The director screwed it up. I think what it is is a lot of people... Uh, who take over these projects aren't comic book readers, or if they're comic book readers, maybe it's a different raw genre. Yeah, um, yeah, no, it, like there, there's no connection between them and the the subject itself. So yeah, uh, David Ayer, uh, for those guys who don't know, he's more known for like cop dramas. He wrote Training Day. He directed Harsh Times. He directed End of Watch. So like that type of style, right? Cop movie military style and then for him to get into a comic book movie was like well this is kind of weird but hey let, let's see what he, let's see what he's got i like those movies he's he's a good director and it just didn't yeah, happen I mean, it's, kind of, it's kind of like asking steven spielberg to do a comic book storyline he's, right. uh, he's a great director and he can come up with a bunch of really good movies but we don't expect him to create a good superhero movie yeah yeah and, and, and i also heard that um well i mean this, this is no secret, but after Batman vs. Superman underperformed, uh, Warner Brothers Studio went in there. went. Uh, they were worried that Suicide Squad was a little dark, and they edited the edited the crap out of the movie, pretty much. And they, they changed the whole ending and left a lot on the floor uh, to kind of lighten the movie. And for those of you who saw it, it's very uh, happy ending. There's a, a everybody wins type thing, and, and it, it didn't work. Uh, Story-wise, creatively, it didn't work. Financially, it did. It actually outperformed what everyone thought was expecting of it, due to like a lot of repeat viewings. A lot of people went to see it a lot of times. I don't know why. It's not good. Yeah, I think um, like when Croc got his BET, that that was part of the happy ending, right? Yeah, yeah, he got his happy. He, got his, <laughs> he was all happy in this. So he got BET. He got yeah. BET. <laughs> so 
So, oh, I mean, out of, out of all the kind of YBC, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that, that, just, that was like the, the last, I don't know, like that, that just made it, that just confirmed how, how off level we was. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, and, like, and for me, was when, uh, when Enchantress, when they defeat Enchantress and they kill her. But then they're like, wait a second. And like, she's alive. Yeah, like, like just like those little cocoon, they break it apart, and she's alive. And then her and the guy get to get her and Rick Flag get together. Oh, they got back together, happy ending. Like, oh god. Yeah, and and the whole thing with um, Jay Hernandez's character, he he keeps teasing the audience the whole movie, like how powerful he is. He keeps hiding it because he doesn't want to let go of his powers. And when he does, he's just like this giant little like fire monster king yeah. guy and he still gets beat up <laughs> and but the bomb that was set on planet underneath um the brother you know that stopped him but not not him yeah so that, that was just, so, <laughs> there's just a lot of really stupid things in the story yeah that that just you know what i really liked about this is when we were seeing the comic book uh comic con panels you saw the whole cast yeah including the indian guy slipknot and then he gets killed within like the first five minutes. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, this is this guy? I he mean, can he can climb anything. Yeah, and then all of a sudden it's like boom. I mean, I I know they replaced him for KG Beast or KG Beast or yeah, whatever. KG Beast, on the yeah. comic book. He's the one that gets you know killed. But I was like, why is this guy in every comic book Comic Con panel? And I was like, <laughs> you know. It's like seeing executive decision, and then Steven Seagal dies in the first five minutes, but he's got a big old name on the on the on the title. <laughs> the bait and switch, man. So, yeah, yeah. I yeah mean, so, like, ooh, so, that was a big secret to hold back. Yeah, yeah. John, you were saying like you know you think that they were worried about it being too dark, but the Dark Knight films were fine, and they were super dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were. Um, the 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 problem with with, with that is. Those movies, they're not the band. Those movies that so, so what Brian was referring to is Batman Begins, Dark Knight Returns, or Dark Knight and Dark Knight Returns, or no, Dark Knight Rises. Sorry, I'm thinking of the comic. They were really dark, but they weren't connected to the DC universe in any way. In in those three movies, there are no other superheroes. It's just Batman. There is no Justice League. There's no Superman. There's there's nothing like that. So even though they were really dark and mature, and really really good, since they weren't associated with any of the of this new universe they're building, it, it was okay. They can be their own thing. They're not affecting anything. There was a, it was a, a finite story at a beginning, middle, end, and it's over, and that's it. So great movies to watch on their own, but they're not associated with the current DC uh, cinematic universe. Well, um, why don't you tell us what the DC universe is now? I, I remember seeing a few years ago there was a Green Lantern movie, and now nobody talks about it. So, yeah, why don't you kind of go over... What the DC universe is today. Uh, so the, the the modern DC universe uh, begins with Man of Steel, uh, Henry Cavill as Superman. So the Superman Return movie that came out in, in 2006 with Brandon Routh is not part of this universe. Uh, that movie bombed super hard, so that movie just wiped from existence. Green Lantern in 2011, starring Ryan Reynolds, was supposed to be the kickoff of the DC cinematic universe. When that movie came out, they had plans for Flash and Justice League and... Batman and blah 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 same thing but once that movie crashed and burned as well they scrapped everything again and started over waited for the Dark Knight trilogy to end and then began again with uh, Man of Steel so the current DC universe is Man of Steel which came out in 2013 uh, Batman vs Superman which came out 2015 uh, Suicide Squad which was last year and Wonder Woman which comes out Friday and then that'll be followed by Justice League, which I think is sometime. November seventeenth. Yeah, just what was it? November. November seventeenth. Well, November. That's okay. So they're gonna go up against Thor. That's that's smart. That's a good move there. Yeah, it's 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 two weeks after Thor. Uh, Thor's on November. I yeah, that's oh, okay. That's not smart. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I was like, I think it's November, and I was like, no, no, that's why would they do November? Thor's in November. But okay, okay. Because they know that they can't beat against any of the Christmas movies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's either that or Star Wars, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's no way that you're going to go ahead and go against Star Wars. So, yeah. So, there's Justice League in November. Next year, I believe it's currently, or tentatively scheduled, I should say, is the Flash movie. I don't know the exact date on that one. 
Uh, Jesse, you got the date on that? Yeah, it's March 16th, but like you said, it's tentatively since they just lost their director. Yeah, we talked about this in the previous podcast. They've lost, they've lost two directors, and they're working on trying to get an, another one. After Flash uh, is Aquaman. Or Aquaman is in there somewhere too, right? Is, that's got to be before Flash. It's actually after December 21st of 2018. That's when they have it scheduled. Yeah, so the new Aquaman uh, is, is also part of the universe. And I don't know if there's any release dates on Cyborg. And... Uh, Cyborg and the Green Lantern Corps are both scheduled for 2020. Cyborg, April, April 3rd. Green Lantern Corps, July 24th. Yeah, see, in those two movies, I'm, I'm really... When, when DC releases a, a, a release date for these movies, I, I tend to write them down in pencil. They've shown tendencies in the past to just really just switch up their movie schedules. They did it before... Uh, after Superman Returns, when that didn't, when when that went nowhere, they scrapped their plans. When Green Lantern in 2011 bombed hard, they scrapped their plans. So when they came out with this list of movie releases for for these DC movies, I always kind of say, well, okay, well that sounds great. I'll, I'll write it in pencil. Cyborg, I just don't see happening at all. Uh, Green Lantern Corps, I'm really iffy on that one as well, although it's possible. Uh, they need to get Green Lantern in here, right? You can't have Justice League without Green Lantern. You you have you got to get him in there. So Green Lantern Corps maybe, and then also in the future, there's plans of a Shazam movie, uh, also known as Captain Marvel, and a Black Adam movie with The Rock. The Rock has already been cast, but those are so far down the line that it's all, they're almost worth not mentioning because they could just not happen. Well, the. The Captain Marvel and the Shazam are actually two different movies. The Captain Marvel, they're going with the Carol Danvers Captain Marvel. Well, no, that's the Mar- that's, that's the um, that's the Marvel universe Captain Marvel. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, you're yeah. Right. DC Comics for guys for those who don't know, Shazam was known as Captain Marvel in the pre fifty two universe, which is the comic uh, DC comic line right now. They changed his name to Shazam, and that's going to be uh, what he's going to name is going to be in the movie. Yeah, they have that for April fifth, uh, two thousand nineteen. So that's weird that they're having that before Cyborg and um, the Green Lantern Corps. Because like you said, Green Lantern Corps, you would think uh, there's a huge comic uh, backing on that versus... I yeah, mean, yeah. Because Green... that is, is old school too. You know, he's around Superman times, but still. Yeah, yeah Green, Lantern's, Green, Lantern. Green Lantern is Green Lantern, man. That's yeah. When I see the posters for the, the Justice League movie, I cringe because I'm like, that's not right. They need, they need Green Lantern in there. Yeah, and with with the Flash, that's the next one coming up after Justice League, and if you know March is what nine months from now, yeah, nine or ten months, and they don't still don't have a director help. I don't, I don't see that happening. Yeah, so I don't know if it throws off their schedule or not. It, it will. There's no way. There's just no way. It'll it'll be pushed back if they even make a movie at all. I'd actually heard rumors that they were thinking of combining the Flash and Cyborg movies together, so it'll be Flash and with Cyborg would be guest starring, which I think would be the a better way to go. Uh, you, you're getting the character introduced faster. Well, actually, he's debuting in Justice League, but this gets him into another movie faster, and it helps, it helps to establish a fan base of his own before trying to make give him his own movie. Because I don't know anyone outside of comic book fans who, know who, size, who knows who Cyborg is. Oh, unless you've seen Teen Titans. Yeah, the cartoons. <laughs> yeah, but this is like similar to what we talked about the other day. Like With Marvel, they slowly introduce each character to the audience so you're familiar with them with dc they're doing it backwards where they're showing you everyone first with justice league and then and then branch off to their own movie right Um, right so i don't know i don't know how how receptive that is how whether or not it's going to work with the audience i just just from just imagining from my point of view how it would work out i don't i think it would be a little bit hard to catch on um, especially for those who missed uh, Justice League and they want to watch uh, Aquaman or Flash movie, how how do we get into that? Like it's a little bit harder to get into, right? Because there will immediately you will have missed some things. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and we talked about the other day about Flash, right? Like how they have DC has a TV universe and then the movie universe, and Flash um, he resides in both movie and TV, so that makes things even more complicated. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, what if you you know they bring in Cyborg and Aquaman in the Justice League movie, and what if you don't like them? You go, yeah, that, that guy sucks. And then his movie comes out, and you're like, I don't want to see that. He was garbage in Justice League. It's, he's kind of backwards. It's a risk. It's a it's a big risk to do it that way. Yeah. 
Yeah, so you mentioned earlier that um, Man of Steel was the first DC um, universe for, for the movie. Um, but Marvel's been doing this for, what, since 2000, like early 2000s? So why, why did it take them so long to get started to catch up? What has Marvel been doing to, to have that big of a head start? Well, to kind of to kind of get the 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 full story of it, I gotta kind of go back back a, a ways to uh, the early '90s. So in the early '90s, uh, comic books were selling like crazy. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember way back then when Image first started, Valiant Comics first started. Uh, these comics were just selling hundreds of thousands of comics a month. The Marvel, the same thing. If they had any X Men on the on the comic, they're selling just crazy crazy amount of comics. Uh, everyone, the reason why was that you had the casual collectors buying all these comics because they thought that they were able to be setting up their kids' college funds, right? They thought, I'm going to buy this comic and it's be worth a lot of money one day. And you had big event comics like Death of Superman and Bane breaking Batman's back. Oh, and then you had the image comics starting like Spawn and Youngblood and Wildstorm. So all these people were buying all these comics uh, left and right. And all the comic industry was doing, Marvel, DC, Image, everybody, was to capitalize on this. They started over uh producing comics uh, and they were they would come up with all these special edition limited edition variant covers and and all this stuff and people were buying them like crazy um and it finally got to the point that with with them producing these these comics that they weren't worth anything right supply supply was way over demand so the casual comic book buyer was like man but i'm spending money buying these comics and they're not worth junk and they stopped buying comics completely so in the mid in the mid '90s, you had what was called the comic book crash, where the sales of comics dropped huge, huge, huge amount, and Marvel took the biggest, probably the biggest hit at the time. You know, D well, DC Comics is owned by Warner Brothers, so they had a parent company to kind of to kind of buffer it. it. Jesse, when when did uh, do you remember when the Warner Brothers uh, AOL time war AOL merger happened? Mm. Was that around the '90s, late '90s? Check. See, and th this was able. This helped DC out at the time. I think that I, it was it was two thousand. Two thousand. Okay. Well, yeah. with, with DC being owned by Warner Brothers, they were okay. Marvel got hit so hard they had to file for bankruptcy, and it got to the point to where I, I didn't think comics were going to be published anymore. Uh, this was around ninety six, ninety five, ninety six, and in order to get out of bankruptcy, Marvel, you know, they had to do a bunch of stuff. Uh, I think they merged with Toy Biz, and they did some other things. And also, one of the one of the things to get out of bankruptcy and to make money was that they had to sell their properties off to the movie studios. And this is why you have the X Men over at Fox, why uh, Spider Man was with Sony, why Uni Universal had the Hulk, and so they they did. Also, What's that? I'm sorry, I was gonna say also Blade and Man. And Blade, and Black. yeah, Blade. Blade was New Line Cinema. Punisher was Lionsgate. Fantastic Four was Fox, and so Mar by by doing this, it's it helped Marvel get out of bankruptcy, but they lost a lot of their their movie their 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 characters. And in the early two thousands, X Men came out, did really really well. Spider Man came out, was amazing, and so these movies started making a lot of money. And Marvel was kind of like, hey, wait, we're we're stuck out out in the cold here because they weren't making anything off these movies. So in two thousand six and two thousand six two thousand seven, they formed Marvel Studios and. This is where the modern Marvel, Marvel universe uh, started uh, with Iron Man and uh, Incredible Hulk in 2008. And the main reason why these movies are so good is that they're run by comic book people. The president of Marvel Studios is a guy named Kevin Feige. This guy came up through the ranks as a producer, produced every, every Marvel movie you can think of starting back from Blade, worked his way up to president. And then one of the big reasons was that his of his knowledge of the comic book universe. So basically, you have a comic book guy running the show. He knows comics. He grew up with comics. He understands them. He gets them. What I like to what I like to compare him, or who I like to compare him to, is like a Bill Belichick or a Greg Popovich of the, from the Spurs. Is that these guys know what they're doing? They've come up with systems to the to, that are are so good that it doesn't matter what kind of players they have, what kind of coaches they have. They always work. And that's what this guy is. He has a plan. He sticks to his plan. He has a system, sticks to his system. And these movies all come out and they're all good. Now, there is a big hurdle 
with the licensing, they don't have the X Men. The X Men are with Fox. Uh, Fantastic Four is with Fox, and they have big problems trying to get those characters in. But he made the best of it. He started off with Iron Man. Iron Man was a huge, huge hit, and he took it from there pretty much. Now it took him a couple movies to kind of get his footing. I don't get you guys probably remember Iron Man was amazing. Incredible Hulk was not too great, but it introduced the Hulk back into the Marvel universe. Uh, and this is this is not the 2003 Hulk movie directed by Ang Lee, starring Eric Bana. That was Universal's uh, version, which is why it's not good. Uh, the 2008 version with uh, Ed Norton is the one that I'm talking about. And then Iron Man 2 was really bad. Do you guys remember Iron Man 2? Yep, that yeah. movie was awful. Yeah, um, so that was a it was a stumbling block for him. Captain America, the first Avenger, wasn't too great. Thor was okay. So it didn't. It's not like he just came in right away and just started making amazing movies. It took him a little bit, and then really hit his stride. I think, uh, not counting Avengers because Avengers was just like there was no way that was going to be bad. That was just awesome from the get go. I would say after Winter Soldier is when they really hit their stride. And their movies just took another step up. And now it, they, you see something with Ant-Man where they lost their director in Edgar Wright, who's a very talented director, and they were able to put in a, a guy whose biggest movie credit was Bring It On, their cheerleading movie, and Peyton Reed, and he knocks Ant-Man out of the park, and it's a great movie. So he's a huge, huge reason as to why the Marvel movies are are so good and so ahead of the DC universe is that he has a system. There's a hierarchy in place. Everyone knows what to do and they know they do their job and these, and that's to produce these great movies. And that's what's happening. Um, yeah. Not to take any credit away, but um, having Disney acquire Marvel studios, you're, you're able to see a lot, a lot higher quality in the, in the movies as well. Like the, the fight, the court, the fight scenes are, um, choreographed much better. You see, the CGI is much better than the previous movies, um, so that that helps tremendously too. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and a lot of it had uh, did with like, whoa, this Iron Man is awesome. This Iron Man movie is great, and you know, this Hulk is really cool. And, and D- Disney saw what Marvel was doing. Marvel Studios was doing. They said, you know what, we need to we need to get in on this, and they came in and bought out the whole company. So yeah, having now now they're on par with uh, DC Comics, where DC Comics had Warner Brothers movies, uh, Warner Brothers money. Marvel has Disney money. Yeah, it's still pretty unfortunate that, like Hugh Jackman as as Wolverine, he'll as of today, you know, he'll never be in in the Marvel universe. Yeah, fighting alongside like Spider Man or or um, the Avengers. Yeah, that that's that's the bad thing about uh, when they sold these licenses off. Um, they didn't, you know, Marvel didn't know at the time that they would be starting up their own movie studio and to create their universe of movies. I'm sure if they would have known, they never would have done it. So for those of you who don't know, Fox has the rights to the X-Men, the exclusive rights to the X-Men. And the way these licenses work is if you have a license to a character, so like the X-Men, if you have a movie or a project in production, the license is yours. The characters are yours. All you have to do is have something in production. You don't. It doesn't even need to be out. And there's a seven a seven year window. If seven years pass and you're not doing anything with his characters, the rights will revert back to Marvel, and that's how Fox lost uh, the Daredevil rights. You guys remember Elektra, right? Yep. Yeah, and that movie was Jennifer Garner Elektra, right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> that movie is 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 Daredevil. hot garbage. It's such a bad movie. So Fox, they were pretty much done with Daredevil. They okay, we're not going to touch this anymore. We're going to concentrate on Fantastic Four and X Men. That movie came out, I believe, in 2004, or maybe a little, a couple years later. And what happened was the deadline came up, uh, the seven-year deadline came up for Fox to lose these rights. So they went to Marvel and said, hey, we're going to lose these rights, but we want to get one more shot uh, to get a movie movie going. And Marvel basically said, we'll only give you another month if you can give us uh, give us a trade and they wanted to bring in the silver surfer and galactus from the fantastic four franchise and they wanted to put them into their cosmic universe most likely probably in guardians uh uh, fox said no and marvel said okay you have you know x amount of days fox wasn't able to get a movie going lose the rights to daredevil devil goes back to marvel and marvel makes that amazing netflix series 
so that's one way for them for the licenses to kind of move around. Another way is kind of like how Lionsgate did with Punisher, was that they made two Punisher movies that were both terrible and both lost a lot of money, and they just gave it up. They just told Marvel, we obviously don't know what we're doing. Take the movies. We don't want it. So the hope is that one day, somehow, Fox and Marvel can get something going with the X-Men crossing over the Avengers, and we can see Wolverine and the Hulk, Wolverine and Iron Man. But... I just don't I don't see it happening. Fox makes so much money off of the X-Men movies that they're they're just not willing to give up a piece of the pie. Their movies are generally really good and they make a lot of money for them. I'm sorry, what? You, is that are you talking about the Fantastic Part two? No, no, just X Men. Oh, okay, because I was gonna say <laughs> Now the you other tra- give- Yeah, the other travesty is that Fox has the Fantastic Four movies released three of them all bad have made no money off of them and they're they're just they're wasting away at fox and the hope is that they can work out a way for to give the rights back to marvel soon or after seven years of being activity they go back to marvel that's a long time to wait the movie the last one was about two years ago so there'll still be another five years hopefully something happens Unless unless Fox can figure out a way to make a good Fantastic Four movie, right, Jesse? Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> didn't Marvel even go ahead and shut down the uh, Fantastic Four comics? They did. To... They did. Yep. So when you're playing your own characters, so that that movie doesn't release, or I mean, that just tells you that your movie sucks. Yeah, uh, and yeah, their movies the are really movie, bad. I'm not gonna get into too many details. Because I didn't watch it, but <laughs> they just, but they just made too many changes to the characters that it, there was no sense of seeing it. Right, and yeah. and we were at Comic Con, and then we sat through a couple of panels, and the director was up there saying, "I love the comics. I grew up with the comics. This is if you love the Fantastic Four comics, this is the movie for you. I stayed true. I didn't change anything. This is going to be a great movie." And he changed everything. Yeah, Mr. Fantastic was like, what, just coming out of puberty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like high school, right out of high school. It's like, okay, I understand with uh, Peter Parker because that's his character. He's he's a kid, but Mr. Fantastic didn't get his powers until later in his years. I mean, they went to space like in their 30s or something, Yeah, right? yeah, Not... exactly. Johnny Storm, was like, then... Johnny Storm was like 15. He was young. Not, not, Reed, yeah. and, not Reed and Ben and Sue. And white. Yeah. <laughs> just a just a tip for those people who aren't the comic book readers. He's only red when he has his powers on. That's the only other color he's either white or red. <laughs> yeah. And he's uh, brothers and sisters with um, Sue Storm. Right, right. Where in the movie, they're adopted. Yeah. Brother. They're adopted. And then also um, his dad, Franklin uh, Richards, was still alive. And that's not how it will happen in the comics. He was dead. Uh, Sue, who is much older than Johnny, raised Johnny on her uh, pretty much on her own. Uh, in the movie, they made him pretty close in age, if not the same age. But also, and also, the biggest I, I think the biggest the worst part is Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom is the coolest villain in Marvel universe, hands down. But maybe in any universe, and they just can't get him right in the movies. And the first one, he went from being this egotistical, I mean, he is egotistical, but more narcissistic uh, scientist who hated Reed Richards because he stole his girl and he stole his girl. So he has to get his revenge. And he gets these weird electrical powers with his suit and it's just just dumb. And then the last one, he's like a, a, a scientist, another scientist, hacker guy who's socially awkward and lives, you know, lives in alone in a basement and just on a computer all day. And then he gets these crazy superpowers where he can like make people's heads explode and stuff. They tried too much to, to appeal to the millennials. I think that's what it was. <laughs> that movie was not, you know, it wasn't designed to honor the, the comic book heroes, but just come in and get the new generation. That's yeah, what they did. Man, it just, it was just terrible, just terrible all around movie. Just not worth watching. So if you guys haven't seen it, don't, don't, they're not making any sequels. It's a dead franchise. 
As a matter of fact, uh, Michael B. Jordan, who played uh, Human Torch, jumped ship to Marvel Studios, is going to play a villain in the Black Panther movie. So it was yep. his first chance he got, he was out of there. Yeah, the, there's nothing wrong with the actors. I mean, when we trash the movie, we're not talking about the actors. It's just the the story and just everything else about it. I mean, like John and yeah, I, we talked offline about this, and we have nothing against the actors. They're all great actors from, you know, they've done other great projects, and that's why they were brought on. They were just um, casted for the wrong movie. Yeah, and even that. Uh... If we did that, we would, we would be talking smack about Chris Pine because of the first Fantastic Four. Chris Evans, you mean. Right. Chris Evans, I'm sorry, yeah. not Chris Pine. And then uh, Ryan Reynolds, where he did the X-Men, the, the Wolverine movie, but he, he plays Deadpool correctly, or Green, Green Lantern. He fucked up two uh, comic book movies through Fox. Well, was Green Lantern a Fox movie? No, Green Lantern was uh, DC, Warner Brothers. So yeah, you can't, you can't like I said, hate on the, the actors. They're just following the script. And... Yeah, they're doing the best they can. Kate Mara, I don't know if you guys saw, there was an interview when she was promoting the uh, Martian. Remember that movie, The Martian? Yeah. And someone asked her about the Fantastic Four movie, and she just said, I can't comment on it because I haven't seen it. So she knew she just moved on, didn't even watch it. All right, cool. Well, can... You, can, you, can, you, can, you can blame uh, Ben Affleck for Daredevil, though. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you, can, you can blame him because he didn't play a, a well Daredevil and then decided he wanted to become Batman. Ah, uh, Daredevil. Yeah, that was, a, that was another one. But hey, it's back. On, it's on Netflix. Marvel has it. It's all good now. Really quick question. Who has the rights for Spider-Woman? I believe it's Sony. Even though she's actually not associated in the comics with Spider-Man, uh, I do think they have the rights just because of the name. Yeah, because I thought she was um, an Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. type of... Yeah, she was, like a, she, uh, she was like a double agent spy character. She has no relation with Peter Parker at all, but I think just because of the name, Sony made sure to, to get the rights to that to that character. All right, well, what's going on with Ghost Rider? I mean, we just saw him come up uh, the last season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So is he ours, or is he just something we borrowed? No, he, he was actually in the, in the same boat as Punisher. When Lionsgate uh, gave up Punisher because they cause their movies, just they, they did two movies that didn't do well, and then just gave them right back. Uh, same thing with Ghost Rider. Sony released the, the two Nicolas Cage movies, which were horrible, mo- horrible movies. Probably they're right up there with, with Fantastic Four. Bad. Both did terribly, made no money, and they just gave it back. They just told Marvel, "You can have Ghost Rider back because we're not doing anything with it anymore." So he's fully back uh, with Marvel, uh, which is why they were able to use him on Agents of Shield. Um, I heard that uh, because uh, it was so well done on Agents of Shield, uh, Ghost Rider became a huge fan favorite. That they might spin him off into either their own show or bring him back in Agents of Shield. I also heard a uh, possibility of us of a Netflix series with Ghost Rider, but uh, we'll see. Right now, uh, they just used him, and he's a he's a huge hit, and I, I hope to see him again because he was really cool. And this one is the latest one that's in the comics, right? This Robbie one. Yeah, this Robbie is. Yeah, he's the latest one right now. So the Ghost Rider passes down from generation to generation, and he's the current one uh, as of right now. Uh, what was kind of cool though it was how they had Johnny Blaze in that one episode. Remember when he gave him the powers? Yeah. yeah, that was cool. Yeah, I liked it the way that they uh, showcased that. So which uh, Johnny Blaze showed up on the show? I, I don't watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, they actually didn't show him uh, um, human form. They only showed him uh, in Ghost Rider form. Oh. So they didn't. So that way there's no like, oh, it's Nicolas Cage. It was just, you just saw him as Ghost Rider. And then he passed his powers okay. on to Robbie. And then that was it. We never saw him again. But there might be something brewing out with, Paul, uh, with Coulson. Yeah. No spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, the the one character that's not in Marvel that is kind of weird is Namor, because Namor is a character in multiple uh, storylines. I mean, he was an Avenger. He was uh, in the Mutants, Fantastic Four. Uh, I mean, he's in love with Sue. So, yeah. yeah. So how, how does he return back to... To Marvel, if, if I mean, like, who owns them and who's going to release them? Um, that one's actually kind of tricky. So his his rights were originally sold to Universal way back in like around the same time, like around two thousand. Um, they had his rights for a while, and the early reports on that movie is that they were they were really hyped on it. And they were going to push it really hard, and they were describing it as like Lord of the Rings underwater. And for for those of you guys who don't know, Namor is he's kind of Marvel's answer to Aquaman. 
although technically he debuted before Aquaman. He's the king of Atlantis. <clears throat> He's a hybrid between a, an Atlantean a royalty and a human woman. And because of that, he can breathe in air, underwater. But he's also really powerful. He's fought the Hulk, uh, heads up, straight on, Thor thing. He can fly. And also rules uh, a giant nation underwater. Now, the rights to him uh, were really tricky. Kevin Feige, there's a couple of interviews with him, people asking where the rights were going, and he didn't know. He said that the, the rights were so tangled up in Universal, they had the lawyers were all over it trying to get the rights back so for a long time he just he it kind of seemed like he was like don't get your hopes up guys i don't think it's going to happen but recently over the last year or two things have been kind of starting to sound positive that they might have gotten to figure it out he was kind of giving like a wink wink thumbs up like yeah maybe joe casada who's the marvel creative C C C O, I i think he straight up said that they have him back but there hasn't been anything officially confirmed as of yet i i really hope they bring him in because that's he's a great character another a foil in the recent comics to black panther both guys ruling nations and kind of putting their their perspective on these superheroes and uh having to care for their people first as opposed to you know stopping someone like doom like well how does that affect me and my people and it's a whole different uh perspective on things um so hopefully hopefully he comes in uh that'd be really cool what about um like like the x-men you know, those movies with Hugh Jackman, like, 20 years ago, they were all pretty good. So, how, like, what did Fox do to kind of get this whole thing started, this whole comic book universe? Uh, you know, they, they kind of got lucky. They hired Brian Singer. Uh, he's the director of uh, the first two X-Men. And he was a producer on First Class, I think. And he directed uh, Days of Future Past and also Apocalypse. Um he grew up reading the comics as well and he knew the comics and he knew the characters and he kind of was like Fox's version of Kevin Feige in that he knew what he was doing. He knew the characters and was able to convey them on the screen. So that's why X-Men three last stand is so bad because he left to do uh Superman returns. So him leaving kind of wrecked two franchises. Actually, that's pretty, that's pretty impressive. But you can see the movies get back on track when he came back to produce First Class. And all of a sudden, oh, it's awesome again. And Days of Future Past was great. X-Men Apocalypse was a, was kind of a, a letdown. I think that's just from fatigue. Uh, he, he knocked those movies out back to back to back. And I think he, it wore him down. So he's taking a break and taking a step back from the X-Men movies. Uh, but yeah, I think that's why the X movies have been overall a uh, solid franchise. Is you had someone in place who knew what they were doing. And and really put put the you can see the passion and the and the love for the characters on the screen and that's also a reason why the wolverine origins uh was so bad because he wasn't involved the second one the wolverine was a little better uh they brought in a talented director named james mangle and that was his first comic book movie and you can tell that he was kind of finding his way the first half of that movie is really good the second one gets the second half of the movie gets a little wonky because i think he was still trying to figure out how to make a comic book movie and then he just did uh logan which was amazing and he you can tell he he was talented enough to figure it out so that's why the x-men movies have been able to not only start off the comic book craze but kept it at a high level over the years is that they i would say fox kind of lucked out by getting guys like brian singer and james mangold in there now tell me when you saw logan there was no tears or no not me man tears. Not, not me man not me no me <laughs> And you know that that was the same thing as when we saw Star Wars and you're like, no, Han Solo. No, man, I was good. Spoilers, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you talking about? What spoiler? What have I said it other than there's at the end, there's something going on. With the at the end and then something big happens. You just gave it away for both movies. Now you have to <laughs> wait and watch all of it and see what happens to them. There's not one sort of, I didn't say what exactly happens to them? Something heartfelt yeah. happens. Yeah, I, I just want to add a quick comment about Logan. Like, I, I really like the the feel of the movie. Like, the movie started like almost black and white. Everything looked really old. Yeah, um, they shot yeah. in El Paso, El Paso. That was like perfect location for that. Um, and you never imagine like these superheroes getting old. So it was pretty cool to see um, Xavier. You know, like 
really old. You know, yeah. he's yeah. He, he really can't control his powers anymore. And Wolverine, he's he's so old now. He's gone through so many wars and and fights throughout his life that he's just worn down. So it was a really good take in this whole like comic book universe. Yeah, you know, when you see them, they look like they never age, right? Even when you read them on on the comic books. Uh, these characters, they all stay the same age, just like Bart Simpson or, or like the South Park character. You, you can't imagine them being old like like all of us. So it's it was pretty cool. Yeah, no, Log- yeah, Logan was uh, Logan was amazing. That was uh, that was a great movie. Um, I also want to point out that uh, Deadpool Singer wasn't involved with Deadpool, but man, that's a, another great great movie. It was cool to see Ryan Reynolds uh, redeem himself in the eyes of the the fanboys. And, uh, you know, you can see the passion behind that type of movie. Um, and also kind of like Logan, where it was a comic book character, but not really, right? Like, you see a comic right, character. Like real yeah. yeah, yeah, talking shit, being funny. Not, you know, he's not a good guy, really. He just has powers. Yeah, both those movies were unexpectedly, they well, well I think that they exceeded my expectations when I saw them. I think it was because of the fact that they fought to keep them made it our... You know, I think that, that if they would have made it like a PG-13 or weeded out some of the the stuff that makes Deadpool what he is, he wouldn't have been accepted by the the comic book fans. Right, right, the exactly. Non, the non-comic book fans are the ones that are bitching about, oh my God, he curses, or what about those sex scenes? Right. And the, the, the people who know who Deadpool is, like, oh, that's so cool, yeah. just like in the comic. Yeah, right. And, off he, the... talks to you, and he talks to you, yep. just like uh, he, he defies the the fourth dimension right so fourth wall um the fourth wall it's uh, but I'm, that's what i'm saying he's he's it, they're true to the comic and then i'm glad that they fought for that and that they they were able to, to keep that because you know even even though it's 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 uh, uh a comic book one not, like he's not really a comic book hero he's an anti-hero yeah and i, I gotta tell i gotta tell this story at uh comic con remember jesse uh, when they debuted the trailer for the first time, oh yeah, and man, the the whole Hall H went nuts. I that yeah. six thousand people were going crazy and just started chanting. Remember it one more time, one more time. And, and they were like, no, 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 we got we we got a bunch of other stuff that we have to play, blah blah blah. And um, who was the moderator? Uh, it Chris, was, uh, Chris Hardwick. Hardwick. Yeah, yeah. He's like, no, no, I have nothing to do with this. And then. We were just so loud. They played it again. Yeah, yeah. It's... And then we had to play it a third time because we did it a third time. And that's when with Chris Hardwick, just fucking play it again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they had the uh, the panel for X-Men Days of Future Past, remember? And they asked Nicholas Holt, they said, oh, how do you feel about being in Days of Future Past? And he goes, I-, I can't think right now. I'm still thinking about that Deadpool footage. Yep. Because they came up after. They came up after and it's Deadpool's Totally yeah. show stole the show. Oh, it was great. That's how I knew that. I was like, this movie's gonna be awesome. I can tell. There's no way it can suck. We had. A, there was a girl right behind us. We had been talking to her uh, uh, from the time we were camping out. Uh, she came with her father. Um, her father was like, "Oh, I'm not into these comic book events, blah blah." But I'm. I want to do things with my daughter, so I decided to camp out with her. And a very old man. And when he when when we woke him up and he had to take his stuff, he was hurting his back and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And. and he was like, I don't get this. And we kind of tried to explain it to him because he had never been to one. You know, you're going to be amazed and everything. And when they did, it was Wolverine. It was first Deadpool. Then it was Wolverine. Then it was uh, first class. That girl behind us was crying. Yeah. <laughs> in tears. Yeah, she couldn't handle and the She couldn't handle the awesome. It, it was... Like an ultimate just show for, for nerds. <laughs> I remember we. Were, I, we I think I. No, go, ahead. go ahead. No, yeah, I remember we turned around and we see her crying. And her her dad's holding her, and he looked at us like, "What the hell is going on?" <laughs> and we're like, "Don't worry, it's good. It's okay. It's fine." Yeah, I I think I told you that I needed to change my pants. Yeah, just... <laughs> I think people were just yelling that throughout the whole hall. Yeah, I mean, if you were outside that hall, you're like, "What the hell?" Yeah, you would have you would have heard us. It was so loud in there. I mean, if there was an upstairs, you would have felt an earthquake. Mm-hmm. It was, it was, it was really good. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad that they 
they did a really good one, and hopefully they don't screw up the second one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm super excited for the second one. You know, they're Cable and Domino and characters like that, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be dope. Yeah, and you, you, guys, you guys told me before that um, that trailer was just, it wasn't even a real movie, right? Like, they just put that out there, and then that was what gave them the confidence to go ahead and make the movie. Yeah, the first uh, it was a it was a CG like like a two minute CG um, test really um, that they shot to kind of give the feel of the movie the the feel of the, the movie and um, someone leaked it online and no one's really copying copying to it everyone's kind of saying that the director did it and when the the uh, the response was so overwhelmingly positive uh, to that test footage Fox said okay uh, let's do it and. You got to give props to Ryan Reynolds and the director, uh, Tim Miller. They fought super hard for years to get that movie made, and they did it and it ended up being great. And now we now we can have another great uh, comic book franchise uh, going forward. That teaser was actually in the movie. Um, if you remember the beginning of the movie where he's over the bridge, yeah. uh, listening to Salt and Pepper, it's that initial him jumping down to the cars and the whole action scene. Yeah. It was. It wasn't the whole scene because they they re, they redid the scene for the movie, but it was basically a small version of that. Yeah, and it was. And that's it was, kind of. Cool. It was all shot in CG, and uh, Ryan Reynolds did the voice. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, this um, this new rated R, you know, comic book genre will, well, I guess is genre the right word? Like the right the rated R movies, um, it'll kind of bring new life to the comic book universe for all these movies and extend the life of it to kind of slow down the fatigue that you mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, you know, we're kind of seeing it with the Netflix shows, right? Those shows are pretty close to rated R. I think they said it would be, if they had a rating for it, it'd be PG-17. We'll see how they push that with Punisher coming up. Um, I'm hoping that whole series is rated R. That would be great. But yeah. Well, that, that's, that last episode of Daredevil of season two, I mean, that was that, was, that should have been like extendable score. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, there is more killing and blood, you know, and from both of them, you got Punisher as well as, uh, as Daredevil just fighting it off, you know? So yeah, that, um, like you said, they, they were pushing it. Yeah. And they had, uh, what's his name? Uh, stick cut that dude's head off. Yeah. That's like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's like, he's like, come back from that. That was, that was dope. Yeah, like I said um, earlier, I, I really want the DC movies to, you know, to be great. You know, it's like they always say, right, like good competition leads, leads to better products for everybody. So everybody wins. But right now they seem like they're so far behind. John, what do you think they will have to do to get back on track to kind of catch up? Uh, you know, it's, that's, uh, that's a that's, good one. You know, we, we, we talked about this in the, in the other podcast, how, uh, Josh Whedon has kind of jumped on uh, to help finish Justice League. And, you know, depending on if he's there full time, if he's going to be helping. Well, I mean, he was also you know signed on to do Batgirl. Then if he's there at DC now, if I'm Warner Brothers and I'm DC, I kind of establish um, a hierarchy around him. Put him in the head spot. If you're a Warner Brothers studio, you, you know, I, they, I know they don't like to do that, but take a step back. Let him run the show. Whatever opinions he has, whatever whatever ideas he has, ride ride with those ideas. Let him kind of steer the ship. And, and this is if he wants to. I don't know if he wants to or not. But we all saw what he did with the first Avengers. How he just he changed. I mean that that movie's a game changing movie, right? So if I if I'm Warner Brothers, I I kind of I kind of step back, let him run the show. It, it just kind of seemed to me that that, and I don't know if it's if if Snyder asked for it or knew about him being like the top dog, but he, he was kind of put in charge of everything when, when, uh, after Man of Steel, he was kind of the architect and it just doesn't seem like he understood the characters enough, uh, to do that. Kevin Smith had a great comment after Batman vs Superman. And what he said, it seemed to him that Snyder in his life has only read one panel of one comic and decided to make that into a movie. And that was the fight between Batman and Superman and Dark Knight Returns. And he he's he just doesn't get Superman. That's obvious. Uh, the Superman in the movies is not the Superman from the comics. Uh, if you want the real Superman, you watch Christopher Reeve. 
that's Superman right there. In these movies, he I, I get what he's trying to going for, where he try to modernize them and try to make them a little more um, relatable. And uh, he's like, oh, should I, should I, you know, should I save the world because I have this power? What if I don't want to? And then mom and pop can you know, they were kind of the same, like, oh, you know, the, the, they'll hate you and they'll vilify you. You don't have to do this. And that's not Superman. Superman does the right thing all the time because he's Superman. He has the power and he knows his responsibilities. And mom and pop can't instill that into him as uh, when he's growing up in Kansas, that you are the most powerful being on the earth. You have to protect us. And he did. And Zack Snyder just doesn't seem to get that. And, and also Lex Luthor, Lex Luthor, I don't know if he was going for, I'm more, you know, he was going for that young tech billionaire guy, eccentric billionaire guy. And that's not Lex, Lex Luthor either. If you want to see the true Lex Luthor, watch the animated series. That's Lex Luthor. A guy who was so sure of himself and so confident that he willed himself into being the most powerful man uh, business-wise. And his hatred for Superman is that he considers himself to be the perfect man and that he is what mankind should aspire to be, is to be Lex Luthor. And with Superman in the picture, that's not possible because people unrealistically want to be Superman. So that's that's Luthor and that's Superman. And Zack Snyder totally missed the mark on on those both those characters. Yeah, in the movie, it, it seems like they didn't really do a good, a good job of explaining why he hates Superman. Right, exactly. I, I saw it with my brother, and right when we walked out, he just kind of looked at me and was like, so Luthor hates Superman just because? Like, they, they just done it. You just kind of chalk it up to, oh, he's just a weirdo, right? He's eccentric, and we don't know. He's kind of crazy. And it kind of made it seem like he was crazy, like he had a mental mental mm-hmm. disorder or something. Maybe it's because Superman doesn't like Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook is dead. You know what? Instagram. I, I, Instagram. You brought up a good point. Exactly. You 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 brought up a good point when you said Lex Luthor. Uh, the best Lex Luthor or representation is the animated series. Why is Warner Brothers doing such a good job on their animated series and just screwing it up on the movie series? Um, <laughs> I mean, Batman animated. Uh, the perfect Harley Quinn because they invented her. Yep. Um, she she got so popular that they had a creator on the comic book side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's um, true. And Batman. Whenever me and you talk about who has the best Batman voice or whatever, we it's the animated series one. I mean, we have to give him props. Uh, and when they do a new movie without that voice, it's just like, who is this guy? Yeah, yeah. So, you, you tell him right away. It's not him. Yeah, uh, and we're talking I mean, about uh, we're talking about the actor Kevin Conroy, who's been playing oh yeah Batman for twenty years now. Kevin Conroy is Bruce Wayne slash Batman. No one ha- has met. It's unfortunate because when you see the movies, obviously you 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 like the original Batman. God, what is his name? I can't think of his name right now. The actor who's uh, the original Batman, uh, Michael, um, Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. I'm sorry, he played a very well Batman. He couldn't pull off Bruce Wayne because obviously he doesn't look like the Bruce Wayne that we're used to in the comics. And so that's why he can't fit that that bill uh, for, for Bruce Wayne. But he played a really, like he didn't have to force his voice. Uh, I think he, he, he was probably the best Batman next to uh, Christian Bell. There you go, Christian Bell. Even though Christian Bell did have to go ahead and force that voice. So... Uh, but like I said, no matter what, the animated series, just the movies, even even now, uh, the movies are so well. That how is it that the execs at Warner Brothers aren't maybe hiring some of the directors from the animated series and putting them onto the movies? You know, I don't know. I don't know. I know they're two separate entities. The the Warner Brothers animations run by Bruce Timm, who uh, created the Batman animated series back in the day. And I don't know. I don't know why they don't look into their their animated uh, counterparts and say, "Hey, get some ideas from those guys." Maybe they just, I don't know. Maybe they see it as a lesser form, you know. Oh, they just do animated movies. But though that's where the best stuff is from. The Warner Brothers animated stuff is is great. Yeah, and and, and you know Lex Luthor, like that's my Lex Luthor when I see him on 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 those movies or the old animated series. Gene Hackman in the old. Uh, 
Christopher Reed movies, you know, he did a good job, but that really wasn't Luthor. He's a little campy, he's a little funny. Kevin Space Kevin Spacey, yeah, he just all he did was a poor imitation of that. Like act like Gene Hackman, but not as good as Gene Hackman. And then uh, I think he was just a little too old too. Yeah, and he might have been yeah. So you're like, ah, oh, I'm not that's Kevin Spacey, I'm not scared of this guy. And then JC Eisenberg, which you know, I don't I don't fault him. He he did he did well with what they gave him, but he basically played JC Eisenberg. He plays the same guy in every movie. So the live action Lex Luthor, there hasn't been the right Lex Luthor. Um, it's the animated one. Um, so to answer your question, Jesse, I don't know. They should. Maybe they should uh, hit those guys up and ask them, you know, what are we doing wrong here? Yeah, like in the video game part, the section like Rocksteady, they made all those Arkham games and they use the, the voice actors for the animated series and they, they sound great. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Those, no, those games. Is... It just feels natural, right? Like when you when you play the video games, you feel like you're watching an animated series, or or you're just you think this is true, this is believable, not like oh, this is fake. You know, like I don't know. To me, just just seeing the animated series just seems more normal. That's that's than watching I don't know, the, the movies. Yeah, you kind you kind of go into the movies with like a sense of like trepidation, right? You're like, I don't know, yeah. I don't see. And then, but when the anime movies are cool, throw that on. I know it's gonna be a bomb. Even though they use different actors, uh, the storylines are are basically copied from the comic book stories. You know, <laughs> yeah, Mark Hamill as as the Joker. You know, yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I, I would have never thought when I when I first found out that Mark Hamill was the Joker, I was like, no. And yeah, he, he he does a really good Joker. I mean, unfortunately, he doesn't have the face or the youth to play a, a Joker in a a full size a, a movie. But that's a that's a type of Joker that we need. Yeah, yeah. And, and for those of you, um, if you want to see a great uh, Superman, how he, how he should be in live action, watch uh, All Star Superman, the animated movie, or Superman versus the Elite animated movie. Then you'll see more who Superman really is. As opposed to Henry Cavill, who's sad all the time. Like, does he smile in those movies? I don't think he's seen him smile once. And it's Superman. You know, yeah, he looks serious uh, most of the time. Yeah, and it's like, wait, that's not Superman. Superman shows up and, hey guys, how's it going? Smiling, everyone loves him. It's Superman. Yeah, so I, I would say I would recommend those movies to kind of get a more accurate portrayal of Superman. Even Amy Adams, I mean, while I love her and everything else, she wasn't the spunky... Lois Lane, the one that's out there. Like you're right. When you go back to seeing the uh, the old '80s Superman, that's kind of what we got. That's they they. I think they designed what Superman uh, should have been, character wise. I mean, except Lex Luthor. That's probably the only one. And um, you know, Richard Pryor. <laughs> <laughs> and don't, I don't know what he was doing in the movie, but <laughs> don't watch Superman three, guys. Superman one, yeah. and Superman two. Don't one, watch Superman it. two, one and two. One that, and two. That's that's it. Yeah. Just like Batman. Don't watch Batman. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Watch Batman and Batman Returns and, and stop it there. Hey John, what about Doomsday? Oh, <laughs> man, that was. See, ah, oh, God. Okay. They like, should never throw him to Doomsday in this movie. No, yeah, and I, I don't know. It's it seems like they just threw him in there, right? Like, yeah, like he. Like, first of all, like you said, where does he come from? Where did just this fool come from? <laughs> and, 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 I'm, and I'm kind of worried about the next Justice League because I was looking at the trailers and you're seeing that the enemies look like some bugs. Who yeah, are these bugs? Oh, uh, those are the parademons. Um, okay. from, yeah, from uh, their Dark Side's minions, but I don't think Dark Side's a villain in Justice League. So there you go. I mean, they're introducing enemies that people are supposed to automatically know. Yeah, uh, yeah, the doomsday, the doomsday thing. It totally seems like they threw it in last minute. The CGI is really bad. The creature doesn't look anything like Doomsday. Yeah. They gave him weird powers where he like explodes. I mean, it, with the he unleashes uh, energy, and I was like, "What? This isn't Doomsday." This, it's, you know, one of the coolest Superman villains, and they just threw him in there just as like an afterthought, and then they kill him. And I was like, "Okay, well, there goes Doomsday. He's gone. What? What a great threat! They just got rid of him real quick." And they they actually follow some logic. If they would have followed the logic and maybe did more character development into them, I would have been fine with uh, Doomsday, because Doomsday was made using the Genesis machine from um, 
uh, General Zod. So, yeah, yeah. Which, which is not how it happens in the comic at all. Comic, no. Uh, Cadmus or Star Labs or somebody creates them, right? Well, he was, the... he was actually, uh, he's Kryptonian. He was, uh, he was, he was like a, a crypto, like an early, early species of Kryptonian. Uh, he was experimented on as a baby. This guy, the, the, the planet was ruled by these creatures that would kill everything and made the planet, uh, uninhabitable. So this scientist gets his baby and kills him over and over and over again. And each time he brings him back to life, uh, he right. gets stronger and stronger and get, he evolves and evolves until it becomes doomsday. And that's why every time he dies, he comes back. Because right. That's right. part of his power. And that's why he hates Kryptonians is because it was imprinted into him to kill Kryptonian creatures. And that's why he hunts down Superman. Uh, so yeah, and, kind of not like the movie. Yeah. And, and the thing with, with, the uh, with the movie, he gets hurt by magic. So every time Sp uh, Wonder Woman fights him, he gets hurt. And I think that's the reason why Wonder Woman seems so kick-ass in this movie, because she's beating Doomsday while you know Batman and Superman are both getting their ass flipped. Oh, and the, and Kryptonite doesn't affect Doomsday either, guys. Just so you know. The, oh in, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the, <laughs> in the comic, yeah, Kryptonite has no effect, but in the movie he does because you know whatever. Yeah, and he doesn't have enough spikes. Yeah, no spikes anywhere. <laughs> just this thing, just ten foot tall freaking thing with, with just as ugly as hell. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, Brian, to answer your question, let Josh read in, put him in charge, let him run it, let him run wild. What if he asked for a um, Serenity sequel? <laughs> <laughs> There'd be a lot of happy people. Hey, you know what? Castle's over. So... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they they can't get away with it and then um what's her name she's not on um on suits anymore on what suits remember uh his co-captain oh i don't know i didn't watch i didn't watch serenity or fly or fly no no uh, i mean I, I don't want to because everyone tells me it's great and so it's like i can watch this show for one season get hooked and then never see it again so i'd rather just just it doesn't exist to me <laughs> Tina Torres, that's her name. Tina <laughs> Torres, she, she's no longer with uh, Suits. and So some of the people are free. The only problem is uh, Marino McCarran, um, she's doing the... Uh, Gotham. Yeah, the Gotham, but I don't know. If you're, if you're keeping up with the storyline, she seems to be... I don't know how they can get rid of her character, because she's an essential character in Batman, but who knows. All right, guys, we, uh, this was a long one. We uh, talked a lot about... Uh, about these movies and what we think and all you listeners out there um drop a comment you know, what do you guys think what should dc do to get uh the ship righted or do you think they're good movies anyway and you just want to hate on us that's cool um let us know and stay tuned for our next podcast the three of us will be reviewing wonder woman uh saturday so stay tuned and uh, watch out for that uh, next video yeah it'll probably be the one of the rare ones where we're all together in one place not remote like we are now. Go ahead and uh, hit us up on Saturday. We're going to go ahead and give you the true spoilers on the movie. We're going to talk about her shields, hot her suits, and anything else that's sexy about her. You guys have a, a good night and uh, hit us up on Saturday. <laughs>